Hey everyone, Ray again, and this is part two of the homemade vertical lathe build for wood turning. Yeah, part two. But I wanted to show you this big beast right here. This is a vertical metalworking lathe. Yes, this is a lathe. And you can see it is quite a beast. This table, which is the equivalent of the chuck, and this is the equivalent of a headstock. This table here is about five foot in diameter. Look at the jaws on this thing. Yes, this is a nice big beast. So this is what I'm using as inspiration for my homemade vertical wood turning lathe. Yeah, now there are obviously going to be some differences. As you can see, it's a huge setup. I'm not gonna be doing anything like this, but I am gonna show you the idea that I have for being able to turn on that lathe since everything is gonna be vertical. The perfect base for my vertical lathe. And it is about 24 inches wide 30 inches long and 21 inches tall and I'm guessing it weighs about 200 pounds it is a part of a machine that ended up getting taken apart and scrapped and now it's going to have another life uh, as a vertical lathe this is the bottom I'm, I'm getting ready to drill some holes right here in the bottom right on the center of each of those pipes for some adjustable feet should be interesting um, I think they're going to be plenty strong and then uh, since it's upside down I'm going to flip it back over to uh, start the work on mounting the slewing bearing. So there's the stand, the base getting ready to be assembled, and this is one of the feet. Now this is a very nice heavy duty foot and it swivels, so that's a nice little bonus. Um, obviously I can adjust the thread and then lock it down with the nut. I got lucky, we had a tray of these uh, that have been sitting here for probably 20 years left over from a machine that we modified, and uh, now I got to use them and it didn't cost me anything it's been sitting here for years so no no cost on these it's a good savings there so there's the base let's go put this thing together One thing that did not get documented in the video uh, for the sake of brevity is uh, the making of these brackets right here. This is just a little 3x3 three three angle by a quarter inch thick with uh, two holes uh, in, the, uh, in the base plate where it mounts to my table and two slotted holes where it mounts to the gearbox. The slotted holes on the sides is so that when it's in position I can actually adjust the location of that gear so it meshes with my other gear now I've already had it together once and I've already set that adjustment so now I just have to put it in and bolt it in place one of the things I did is the mounting holes here are actually tapped So I moved the angle a little bit so you could see this. Right now the, um, the pinion gear is 
disengage from the main gear, the ring gear. But um, the slots in the brackets allowed me to adjust it. You can see here, so I can get the mesh just right. You don't want too much or too little. You want that mesh to be just right. So it looks like it's about about there. That's, like, that's about how much backlash I want so that I'm not putting too much pressure and wearing out the gears prematurely. So now uh, I'm going to turn the gear shaft. You can see what happens. But right there. That's a little bit too much backlash so I have to readjust it. So there you can see the setup the gearbox underneath, the shaft that's on the long side. I still need a motor. I need to find a motor to attach. And I might attach the motor directly to the gearbox and then a one-to-one -one, uh, belt and pulley. Or I could attach it right to the base. I got plenty of holes there to choose from. I'm not sure yet. I need to find the motor. My, uh, my guess is a half horsepower motor will be plenty for okay, this. Okay, so you can see how that's going to work with the gearbox and my eight to one or eight and a half to one ratio between my two gears. I think it's gonna be pretty nice. Um, obviously I need to find a motor and uh, what I'm thinking for my cutter head, I'm gonna show you right now. All right guys, so this here is a Grizzly Shaper that is in our shop for modification. It's not ours, it's not mine personally either, but the customer wants us to modify this to do a very specific job, to do only one job. What I wanted to show you is this. This is a power feeder and this is a power feeder stand. Now, I'm not interested in the power feeder, but it was here and I figured I'd show you what my thinking is. So imagine removing the power feeder and putting a router here instead with the uh, spindle of the router facing that way and on that side would be the table of my vertical lathe. So what I want to do is get one of these, not obviously this one belongs to the customer, but something like this um, and here's the beauty. If my router is mounted there, as my piece of wood is turning, I can move this in and out. Right now, it's, I got it loose because I was adjusting it. But I can move this in and out in a very controlled manner. Now, it's not precise, but you can see I can move it and, and uh, adjust it as needed. So precision isn't really that important. Rigidity and adjustability is more important. Remember, we're going to have a big chunk of wood spinning around. I need something to hold the router so I can adjust it in and out. And the nice thing about it is that it will also, and of course you can lock each axis independently. The nice thing is, is I can also bring it up and down. So this is a mini version. They make bigger ones. I'm going to be on the lookout for a used one. The other thing, because of the size of the table and the pieces of wood that I might have, I can also pivot it. So if I have a piece of wood that is so big it almost hits my my post for my uh, my support, I can pivot the arm, pivot the router, and I have as much clearance as I can for a piece of wood as can reach the post. So I think it's going to uh, be quite interesting. There you go. That's what I'm thinking. To use a power feeder stand as an articulated cutter head. With a, with a router on the end. I think it's going to work very nicely. I can buy them new, they're very expensive, or I can wait and see where I can find it. It's about 1.30 in the morning right now. It seems to be the only time I have that is uh, free and quiet to do work on these projects. Uh, I, I know that a lot of you are excited about this project and it's a little bit slow moving for your taste. Please be patient um, as I find parts. As you saw, the feet I had in the shop I didn't even know I had them in the shop. I had to go looking and I found them. Um, and the stand, which almost got scrapped, I was able to save. So to give you an idea of what I have invested in this so far, uh, the slewing bearing, I think I paid about $100, $125 for it. The gearbox was, I think, under $100, but we'll call it $100. Uh, this first um, spur gear here was about $30. And then the ring gear, which uh, if you guys didn't see part one uh, of the build that ring gear was about thirteen dollars on ebay uh, so i don't have very much i have less than um two hundred and fifty dollars invested in here or thereabouts about two hundred fifty dollars um all i gotta do is find the cutter head i'll probably use one of my routers i have several and um and a motor and 
will have a vertical lathe for probably less than $500. So I'm looking out for those deals. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all my future videos. Uh, if you do have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. I do read them all and I do respond. I couldn't have grown my channel without the support of all of you, so I really do appreciate you guys. Thanks again.